Hello and welcome to this section of Calculus, Extra Practice with Integration. In this section we're going to continue working with the DISC method and just working additional problems to get you comfortable. And as you've seen now, um, you know, once you understand what the uh, relation is and how you set it up, the rest of it just becomes uh, using our calculus techniques to integrate the functions and get to the answers. So let's go ahead and just dive into another one. These will be a little more, I don't want to say tricky, but just a little more involved typically. So let's say we have f of x some function is secant of x. That's what we are bounding our guy with. And the region is negative pi over 4 uh, up to the value of 0. All right, so what we have here is uh, this is a function, the secant function. We're revolving it around the x-axis. Here's the extent or the length of that object. And what we want to do is find the volume. So we want to say the volume is equal to um, from a to b of pi times f of x squared dx. And so for this case, it's integrating from pi over 4 up to 0, pi, and then f of x squared, since f of x is just secant, uh, what we have is secant squared of x dx, because we're just squaring the secant, and so that's what we get. Now that's what we need to integrate. Now I have a question for you. Do you know what the integral of secant squared is? You might not think you do, but in fact you do. Because if you remember back, the derivative of the tangent is secant squared. I'll say that again. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. We learned that back when we learned derivatives. So if the derivative of tangent is secant squared, then the integral of secant squared must be tangent. So you actually know that. That should be baked into your head at this point. We'll have pi negative pi over 4 up to 0, uh, and actually we don't even need to do that, we know what the integral actually is. Uh, the integral of secant squared is just tangent of x, and now we need to evaluate from pi over 4 up to 0. All right, so let's just crank through it. So we have a pi, we'll open up a bracket, and we'll say tangent of 0 minus tangent of negative pi over 4. All right. So, who knows what the tangent of zero is? Well, many people watching this might have memorized what that is, but if you don't remember, just remember to do the sine of zero over the cosine of zero. Right? Uh, now, who remembers what the tangent of negative pi over four is? You're probably gonna make a mistake if you try to do this in your head. So I write it as the sine of negative pi over four over cosine of negative pi over 4. And that way, I know that I don't have any mistakes. I know everything's written down, and I just evaluate each line separately. So I have pi. What is the sine of 0? Well, sine of 0 here should be 0. Cosine of 0 should be 1. So that takes care of that term. What is the sine of negative pi over 4? If this is 0, negative pi over 4 is down here. Sine is negative down here, and it's square root of 2 over 2. So it's negative square root of 2 over 2. And on the bottom, the cosine of this negative pi over 4 is positive square root of 2 over 2, because cosine is positive in this quadrant. And so what we have here, since we have 2's on the top and the bottom uh, in the denominators, we can cancel that. If you don't see that, you can flip over and multiply and see that the 2's are going to cancel. And so what we're going to have, uh, really you didn't even really need to do that because you have the same thing on the top as you have also on the bottom. So what you'll have is pi, and on the inside you'll have a zero minus, what do you have over here? 